Welcome back to the Guardian with Joy and Holly radio show. Moments away, Stan Defridas. But first, if you got problems with some Japanese beetles in your yard, Rescue has the product in which can help you rid them from your garden. Yeah, Japanese beetle traps, when used properly, draw beetles away from your plants and trees. The trick is to hang them 30 feet from plants you want to protect. That's the thing. People will put them right on the plant, and you're bringing everybody in the neighborhood for the party. You want to get them away from the plant. That's why the product works when you do it correctly. Right. So, yeah, it traps them, and then you want to keep them away from where they're going to cause the damage. Rescue Japanese beetle traps are the only traps with a controlled-release lure that lasts the entire beetle season. They have an extra-large bag that is welded directly to the trap, stays put even when it's full of beetles. And then it's only trapped with a reusable bag that opens and closes at the bottom. If beetle season is a bad one, you just open, empty the bag, trapping the beetles with the same trap. You can go to rescue.com for all their products, traps, and then they're made in the USA. So that's rescue.com. Holly, let's go to the hotline and bring in our guest for this week. Yeah, Mr. Green Thumb, Stan DeFridis, is an urban horticulturist, columnist, author with over 40 years of gardening experience. He is also host with his son, James, on the Ask Mr. Green Thumb and Real Estate Show on AM 860, The Answer, out of Tampa, Florida. Welcome to the program. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be with both of you. Well, we, we thank you for taking time out of your day, Stan. And for people who are not aware, you went through some very rough patch the last couple of months. You've got a new heart, and uh, I'll let you tell the story. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm very uh, feel lucky and blessed. I am the 1,465th heart transplant person out of Tampa General Hospital. And uh, so they've done a, a few of them. Um, I was, um, I guess, like a lot of guys, I tend to think, you know, I'm macho. I, I didn't smoke. I don't drink. You know, I might have a glass of wine or a beer on occasion, but I'm not a drinker. Um, I've been athletic all my life, um, you know, from winning awards uh, at my high school as the best track athlete to um, being most valuable player on my little league team and being a second degree black belt. Um, I've been, you know, captain of the USCA tennis team for 30 years. So I was pretty athletic. And uh, I always, if you'd have asked me, I'd have thought my heart was the strongest one around just about because I could go and, and do a lot of things that a lot of people couldn't do. But um, slowly but surely, um, I had congestive heart failure, you know, to the point of uh, I wound up sleeping in an easy chair as opposed to I couldn't lay down to go to sleep. Um, my legs got so big and feet that I couldn't get my shoes on. And uh, so I went to the doctors and they said, ah, they, they de-reased me, took off 27 pounds of water. And eventually where I was at Countryside Hospital in Clearwater, or they, they said, hey, you need to go to, you need a new heart. And um, so I went over there and my doctor Kumar said, hey, I got to put you in right now. You're, you're down to like 10 on the refraction scale and uh, anything less than that. And it's, uh, you know, the, 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 that's all folks. <laughs> and so... I, I believed him and I thought, well, I better do what they say. So for about, oh, almost uh, 60 days, 59 days, I was on a machine and um, called an impella that actually pumped blood into my heart. And without it, I would have uh, would have died. Um, I was getting to a point where I would have either had to have uh, got a, a, a received a thing called an LVAD, either an LVAD, which is like kind of an aquarium pump. You know, the problem with that is they, it, it's a good thing. They didn't have it 20 years ago. People just died. But, um, you know, I didn't have to have it permanently. A, a heart came along and uh, a young person's heart that was 23. And um, I would say uh, my life was saved and um, probably three or four other people, you know, some kidneys and um, liver and that type of thing. So that was just really a blessing. And uh, I would say, you know, if you're thinking about being a donor to it, you know, burning up a good heart or liver or kidney or burying it, you're, you're not doing much. And um, if you, you can save someone's life. I've been a donor for 30 plus years, not knowing that I would actually need that service. But, uh, you know, to me, it was a blessing that uh, she gave me the gift of life. Now I 
do have to take anti-rejection drugs. <laughs> but well, but, it, it's glad uh, we're glad that you're here with us to not only uh, help educate Holly and myself, but all of our listeners across the country with some gardening questions. With 40 years of experience, you probably know the answer to, to a couple of that we're going to ask here. I, I hope so. Yes. So, so how would one know when it's time to prune a tree, and what is the best method to call uh, to prune it? If you can't prune it yourself, how do you know? who to call and what's a professional line of communication with somebody. So you're, well, not, getting, last, you're not getting gypped. Yeah, the last line would be to get a certified arborist in. I, I am a certified arborist, but I always say I'm a certified arborist that doesn't ever carry a chainsaw. Um, but I go out and look at trees. I do a lot of uh, a court case work. Uh, I've worked on probably 500 cases, but I, but I don't do much as far as, um, you know, I'll, I'll look at stuff. We'll, I'll inject trees sometimes for insects or fungus or for, with nutrients. But um, I would say, you know, when you're going to trim a tree, you probably want to think of the three-step method. If it's a, any kind of a big branch, you uh, undercut, you cut from above, you cut off that branch, and then you make your next clean cut. So you might leave maybe a foot, and then you cut it down to, um, as an arborist would say, either the branch um, ridge or branch collar and it's sort of where that thick part is before it starts to become thinner again or you know the regular size on the branch um, that's how you should trim it because if you just trim it from above down often you'll get it to split and it'll split down into the trunk and then you've got a lot more area to worry about disease and other problems getting into a tree um, probably the best time to trim a tree is during the dormant season and that, of course, can vary for, you know, like where you're at, the dormant season. Um, you might have branches just break, breaking out now with new buds. Um, with here, we're, we're almost year-round tropical. Um, we don't get much as far as really hard freezes. Uh, it's unusual. I can't. The last hard, hard freeze I can remember as a youngster was 1962. <laughs> mm. So we're, we're going back just a ways in history um, here. But, I mean, I have bananas in my backyard, and I've got avocado in my front, and I've got citrus, and I've got a lime. And I mean, since I can grow tropical, I like to grow tropical uh, with hibiscus and things of that nature. But going back to your, 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 your question with the trimming, um, you know, if it's, if it's small enough, you think you can do it, do it. I would say for guys, you know, there again, that get to be my age, if you get to be in your 60s, don't go climbing around on a big tree, you know, with dress shoes, with a chainsaw, if that's not your business. Because one trip to the hospital, and you're going to spend a lot more time and effort if you don't die. Um, so, so get someone who's Someone else who says, hey, these guys did a great job. They did a nice job cleaning up afterwards. They didn't leave They didn't leave uh, a lot of stubs. Uh, now, if it's something small and you can do it yourself, you know, I'm, I'm all for that. I like doing stuff myself. I'm a do-it-yourself kind of guy. But I have to rein myself in a bit, too. You know, my the lovely Mrs. GT sometimes tells me, hey, remember, you're not 20 or you're not 30 anymore. You know, so you... Um, there were times, you know, I would climb up on the top of a four-story roof and re-roof my roof 20 years ago. Um, but I don't think I'd do it today. I'm, I might supervise it, and I'd probably do the same thing with tree trimming. I'd probably get out there and watch, and I might make some suggestions. You know, any branches that are dead, any branches that are rubbing against each other, crossing in an unusual fashion, they should be removed. Um, down here, when we do get hurricanes, it often just beats the heck out of trees. And so you often have a lot of trees that you have to do some trimming on. Um, you know, a relative of mine who lives in Louisiana this last year had every tree on his property knocked down by a hurricane that went through. And he had like 150 trees. Mm. But it just went through like a, well, like a tornado can. You know, that's one of the things I'd be worried about in the Midwest is tornadoes can just be you know, so deadly, but Florida gets its share of tornadoes too. Not, not as much as, you know, Texas and the Midwest, but, but we do. And, um, you know, those winds are really quite, quite damaging. Since it's, we're in a drought here and we had some hot weather, what are the best ways to protect your plants in the heat of the summer? 
Well, water is always the key to life. So make sure you can get some water to them. And and that's sometimes difficult. Um, I have an automatic sprinkler system and we have reclaimed water down here. So that makes it nice. I can use water uh, legally every, every day. But if you didn't, I'd still think about um, if the tree needs shade, how about get some shade cloth, build a little block from the sun. If you're getting really hot sun and you're not getting enough water, you can kind of build a little shade house, if you will, or at least a shade screen on one side uh, where the sun's really beating down on it. I, I find here, and I'm sure in your area too, you know, from about 1.30, 2 o'clock till about 4.30 to 5, it just really is quite hot. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm paying more attention to that now too, because I'm taking drugs now that I can't stay out in the sun very long or my, I increase the chance of skin cancer, which we might also add besides getting your heart checked out. And I recommend guys do that, especially if you've had guys and gals. And if you've had mom or dad or grandma, or grandpa, maybe even some aunts or uncles or brothers or sisters that have had heart problems, you genetically may be prone to it. And don't just say, oh, well, I'll spit on it and take two laps because that was kind of my attitude. So I would say, you know, as, as I like to say, I was in the, uh, the river in Egypt. I was in denial. You know, I kept saying, no, it can't be me. So the same thing is true for for uh, other other activities that you may be in. Now be, be careful. Um, watch the salt. I've always been one that loved to put a little salt on, a little pepper on. I know, uh, you know, Holly, you like to can and stuff and you get stuff fresh from the garden. Um we should be eating more stuff from the yard and garden and less from packaged and bagged food. You know, it's, it's, it's fun to eat potato chips, but let's face it. You know, they're not that healthy for you. French fries taste great. They're not that healthy for you. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're a vegetable though. You could say that. Right. (laughs) (laughs) So I say some of those things just because, and I've done it, too, because a lot of times I'd come in from tennis. I played three hours of tennis. I'd go, you know, I could go get me a, a McDonald's or Wendy Burger and a fry and a drink. And it's, you know, it's, it's just a matter of driving through the drive through and, and that's not bad on occasion. But I was probably doing that once or twice a week. So maybe, if anything, I was overdoing some of the foods that I knew that I shouldn't be. But, you know, it, it's a little extra work to cut up the carrots and the celery. It's a little extra work to, to handle some of the veggies. Um, but I've grown hundreds of broccoli uh, over my time, um, cauliflowers and Brussels sprouts and lettuce. Lettuce is always easy to grow. If you've got some even partial shade, the greens will grow. So, um, you know, tomatoes, of course, eggplants, anything in the Solanaceae family likes that full sun like uh, well, peppers, eggplants, tomatoes. So if you've, if you've got a spot that's getting really full sun, just make sure you can get water to them. Right. Well, Stan, we greatly appreciate the time that you've given us. How can people find out more about you? How can they listen to the show on Sunday mornings? Well, they can go to AskMrGreenThumb.com, and it'll take you to, uh, you can see some of our past, listen to some of our past shows. You were on one of them just recently. Yep. And, um, and uh, we appreciate that. And um, certainly we encourage people to, uh, they can go to 860 as well, AM. It, uh, I know you're on a bunch of stations, and uh, I at one time was on like about 100 stations. So it's, it's always fun to get people, you know, contacting you from all over and saying howdy. And sometimes we can answer their questions, and sometimes not. But I usually try to find the answer if I don't know it right away. You can't know it all. Right. But um, I think that's been... It's been fun. I'm, I'm hopefully now I have another 20 years of uh, hopefully doing some radio and some podcast. Well, we, we are happy that uh, you were able to uh, be one of the fortunate blessed ones to receive a heart and uh, able to continue to do what you're doing. I, I appreciate that. And uh, thanks to all the your audience out there. I wish them all that they have a great day and, um, you know, be good to yourselves. Check out your health. Check out your heart. Thank you. Uh, th- thank you. Stan. Hey there, gardeners. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. If you like what you've seen, you can search through the channel and find full in-studio videos of the entire show. If you want to go another route, you can search for it on your favorite podcast platform by searching the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener 
radio show or the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show, and you can download it and take it with you. You can check out all past seasons at our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, under the radio tabs at the top of the page. We thank you for joining us. We hope you've learned and enjoyed the show, the segment, and we'll see you next time.